So it's uh, all for play for still. I think so. Do you want to bet against us? Good evening and welcome to For the Love of Paul McGrath podcast. It's Paddy and Stephen here giving you through a run through week two of the WSL uh, fixtures for this week, and uh, notably our away fixture to Liverpool at Prenton Park this evening. Um, ra- largely disappointing game. Unfortunate. We've we've to report on another defeat for the for the beginning of the season. But Stephen, how are you? I'm good. I was better. You were yeah. better before yeah. kick off, I suppose. Off, yeah. yeah. Look, we won't hang around. We'll get we'll get straight into it. Um what what were the outstanding team news for, for the start of the game today? Well, unfortunately last week Kirsty Hansen picked up a red card, so she suspended for this yeah. game and the next two. So Adriana Leon came in for her. She was playing on the right. Lehman, who was last week playing on the right, she moved over to the left wing. And uh, Laura Blinkilda Brown has also dropped to the bench, and uh, Jordan Nobbs replaced her. Many were looking for Jordan Nobbs to start last week, and they got their wish this week. Yeah, um, the commentary team alluded to the fact that, that Jordan was uh, she had an extended break, obviously after getting to the World Cup final, so she's had a decent rest. Probably not up to match fitness speed, and that's probably what they were getting at when when they said that. Albeit they were very one-sided commentary team, I thought they were very heavily weighted towards the home side. But what will be will be. Um, we have to uh, we have to ourselves become better and, and put ourselves into that equation of talking with the big boys and and playing with the big boys and getting up to uh, to that level of respect from from the commentary team and the referees and everybody else in between. So run us through the the, the starting lineup and and tell us how they all played or where they all played. So. Very similar to last week, the same back four and goalkeeper, Daphne Van Domsler and goals, Sarah Mailing on the right, Anna Patton and Rachel Corsi centre backs, and Dan Turner left centre back. In midfield, then there's Staniforth and Lucy Parker. Then Adriana Leon was playing on the right, Alicia Lehman was on the left, Jordan St- uh, Jordan Nobbs and Rachel Daly were up front. And that's if I was to pick the team, I would have picked very something very similar. That's a good pick. On offer, yeah. yeah. So how do how do we start the game? How how did it, how did it start to pan out for us? Well, it didn't start very well. I didn't think it took us at least 10, 12 minutes to get into the game. It was all Liverpool from the start. They had two early crosses on the left side from Taylor Hines, which I wouldn't say caused problems, but definitely asked questions of the defense. Mm. And a few half chances came. Yeah. And then the Sky Sports graphic came up then. Most goals conceded from crosses. Aston Villa second last season in the WSL and <laughs> Liverpool third. There you go. Yeah, and we so can see from a corner. Matt Beard must have been looking at that before kickoff and sent them out, sent the crosses. <laughs> the crosses the in. So talk us through the goal. Uh, it, it took 21 minutes. 21 minutes, yeah. Well, a ball got played into Holland, who uh, spun past Sarah Mailing and then ran nearly to the end line, and then just cut back, sent the ball in, which was poorly cleared back into danger by Dan Turner, I think it was. It came out to Hobinger, and yeah. she took us one touch to the left and then top left corner. Yeah, was, I think we can safely say that Hobinger hit a dinger. <laughs> you know, hit a she dinger, absolutely yeah. buried it into the top corner. It was it was a fantastic goal, in fairness to her. Um, and look, we were we were shell shocked after that, weren't we? It was tough to, to find any recovery after that, and we found it very hard to get into the game. Yeah, well, say that we went up the pitch then from kick off. Staniford hit a shot from the edge of the box. We won a corner, and then we nearly got a goal from the corner. It nearly found its way into the into the net, but it was tough to get fully back into the game and get a goal or mm. anything to show for, for a bit of effort there. Yeah, I think I think as a game, the first half was quite poor. It was it, it was scrappy enough. They they were probably the better side. I think we can all agree. Um, they were they were very well drilled and very well put together for a side that finished seventh last year. I was very impressed with them. Um, what do you think yourself? They were they were 
near enough down the end of the whipping boys they were just kind of keeping their head above water really last season but yeah. you know give bear in mind the fact that they they've obviously beaten Arsenal last week and played us today they're going to be there thereabouts aren't they yeah well last season was just a transitional period really because they'd only just got promoted and they were just establishing themselves in the in the league and they definitely established themselves yeah, this season so sure. far anyway. So we got into half time and uh, it was time for Carl Ward to try and wave, wave the magic wand as such. So there, were, there was a change at half time. What, what did we go with? Well, at half time, uh, Ebony Salmon came on for Alicia Lehman on the left. I thought Lehman was playing reasonably well, but mm-hmm. Ebony Salmon nearly straight away, she nearly got a goal. Yeah, near enough for first touch. Intercepted the pass yeah. from the keeper and just. She just didn't lift her head when she was mm. playing with the ball. Got be excited, I'd say. There was a, there was a few occasions where she got herself into a decent position where she just couldn't either get the ball out from under her feet or or didn't get the shot away in time. Yeah. But she looks like somebody, you know, with a good football and brain that that we we are going to look for her to bail us out in weeks to come, aren't we? Yeah, well, in football, sometimes the hardest thing is to get those chances and get in positions to have those chances. And she had her chances today. She just mm. needs that killer instinct. Yeah, and and look on, on another day, on a, on another stage, she, she takes those chances, and we're, we're we're in a completely different conversation at the moment. <laughs> yeah. You know, but uh, the biggest yeah. the story of missed chances, though. The in the first half we skipped over, but uh, when Adriana Leon took it to the end line and cut it back for Jordan Nobbs, no, it's just yeah. It just it just wasn't their day, really, was it? You put the house on Jordan Hobbs would, scoring yeah. from there. Yeah, absolutely, the block off the line, though. So yeah, but like we we did start lively enough in the second half, and and then we we had a number of changes again, hadn't we? Yeah. On the 60 minute mark, Pacheco came on for Mailing, and Blinkilda Brown came on for Nobbs. Uh, Nobbs and Blinkilda being a direct sub mm. in the same position, but. Pacheco coming on completely shifted the whole back four, really. Yeah, and it took a bit of time to recover from that, didn't it? Yeah, it would. Yeah, we were we were disjointed. Yeah. And w- while I really like Laura Blinkild, um, it's going to take her a bit of time as well to bulk up and be be ready for for this because she's, she's still fairly young, isn't she? So, yeah. Yeah. So you know, it's good for her to get this game time, but uh, it it's it was a tough game today to to to, to come in on that level, wasn't it? It was a really tough game, yeah. yeah. And specific, very, specifically through the middle, I thought they bossed it. Very physical. The three centre backs gave no time. Mm. Anyone, if you entered the final third, they'd they're closing you down. They're tugging your jersey. They're tackling you. It's yeah. just very tough. They, they've so much going for them, really, haven't they? They do, yeah. Mm. So tell tell us how we finished out the game. Well, uh, Simone McGill came on for Adriana Leon. Her mm. only a third game for Aston Villa. After her injury, there yeah, the she Euros. was out for all the season last season. Yeah. I thought that was a strange substitution because I, I was very impressed with Adriana Leon. She looks, she looks like a tough cookie. She yeah. looks like someone like she she's well able to bully people off the ball. She's good in possession. She's a good crosser of the ball. Like there's, I I know we've lost our first two games, but there's a lot to be positive about here, isn't there? There is, yeah. I mean, Simone McGill, she was standing up ready to come on the 60th minute when Rachel Daly was down and injured. Mm. So I'm not sure if she was supposed to come on for Daly or. Yeah, it seemed to be that seemed to be what happened. So Rachel Daly was down with an injury, and they weren't too confident that she would have stayed on. Yeah. So so they decided to hold off on Simone McGill to come in, which which was the right decision because, um, so they'd already made the decision at, at the sub at half time, so that, that you can only stop the game three times isn't it whatever way those subs work that's why they bring two or three on at the one time yeah. so you just got to be a little bit careful with that um unfortunately a few minutes after coming on we conceded again we did uh, a counter-attack lolly ran down the left wing and i thought it, she was well shepherded out to the side by Staniforth and i think it was rachel corsi they shepherded her out mm. but then she played a great ball in and natasha flint she's just she's a goal scorer we saw yeah. at celtic last year just a goal scorer and spun around Pacheco and found the bottom corner. Yeah, she took the goal well. In fairness, the two two great goals we were beaten by. Um, probably could have done a bit better with the second goal. I thought. Yeah. Um, it was Pacheco and Dan Turner? Dan Turner, was. whoever it was in yeah. front, I thought they could have they could have closed it down a little bit more. But you know, Daphne Van Domselaar, who we spoke about last week, 
you know, she's a fine goalkeeper. She got a hand to it, but unfortunately, not enough as a squirmed underneath her hand. But look, there's a, there's a, there is a lot to be positive about. We we're not too downbeat about it. Like I, I've I've no idea how this this fixture list has come about. But if you if you look at the um, if you look at what we're up against for the first few weeks of the season, it's actually nuts, isn't it? Man United uh, first game of the season, and then Liverpool away, and then Arsenal away. It's just yeah, it's just not your day when that comes out of the draw. Is Followed it? by Spurs and Chelsea. So, Spurs and Chelsea. Yeah. yeah. So look, we, we we could find ourselves in a position where where we're playing catch up in in the coming weeks, but we we've got to be patient and like hopefully. You know, if, if last week is anything to go by with 12,000 people turning up at, at Villa Park, that the patience will remain and people will turn up at Walsall to watch them play. Um, as I said, there's a lot to be positive about. I know we were beaten twice. Um, you know, it's it's a decent team. It's a decent squad. Yeah. It's it's just we're, we're hamstrung now with, with having that suspension. In the, in, like we could have really done with her today, couldn't we? Our physicality, our pace, everything. Yeah. It's just so dangerous, especially on that counter attack. To and not on the press, you can really cause problems for opposition. And yeah, to have her out for three games at the start of the season. It's just, it's not, it's not it's ideal. It's not ideal. It's not ideal. Like, yeah. a, like I mean, she she leads the line well along with Rachel Daly. The, the two of them in attack give you so much options, attacking options up there. Yeah. So, there's while, while there's a lot to be positive about we're a bit downbeat over the fact that 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 look and look it could be a lot worse this this could be a, a star striker or a star player out injured we're also missing kenza dali used to come back into that i've no idea when when she's due back in but um she'll she'll be a big uh influence on that team when she comes back into it as well so it, it's a question of being patient and and getting behind them as much as we can yeah. moving on to next weekend so we got to go away to arsenal you know Arsenal are, you know, historically one of the best teams in the world. Yeah. Um, they haven't had the best of starts either. No. So, what what do, what do you think our chances are? At, at, given that we're a week out from it, what do you reckon? Um, nothing is impossible, as they say. And we were competitive today and last week. We we'll be competitive again next week, I think, and mm. we'll definitely will we win. Who knows? Time will tell. And look, Arsenal haven't had the best of starts. As I said, they lost to Man United last week, or they lost to Liverpool last week, who yeah. beat us today, uh, and they drew two all with Man United today, or today or yesterday, whatever it was. Um, so they've had a tough start to the season as well. So hopefully we can toughen it up a bit for them. Yeah. Um, we, we're live next Sunday. Uh, the kickoff is at two o'clock, uh, away from home again. So we've uh, we've a lot to um, <laughs> we've a lot to uh, consider going forward, but I, I think I think we'll be fine. I think it's just a case of we we got a bad run of fixtures, and um, we probably didn't expect when when we come into this Liverpool to be so strong, and um, and and given that they were so strong when they got their second goal, they celebrated like they won the league. So they knew they were in a tough game today. In fairness, well, that was the end of the unbeaten twenty twenty three away run, first yeah. game. First loss away from home in the WSL in this calendar year. Nuts, uh, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but look, and, and that, that tells you in itself that we, we got a decent run of it last season as well. So hopefully towards the back end of this season, we can see a few handier games, especially after we get the, this murderous row of fixtures out of the way. Yeah. Then we can uh, we can look forward to what will hopefully be a, a brighter uh 2023-2024 season and we can we can get back up to the levels we were back on last season. Any thoughts on a, a player of the match from a Villa point of view? Player of the match? I'd say I'd have to give it to Lucy Parker, the new signing. I thought she was very good in midfield today. She carried the ball well and she played a good few balls from mm. deep and into the final third and I thought she was the best really. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed watching Ad Adriana Leon, who I alluded to earlier. Um, very hard to pick out a player of the match, really. Yeah. Um, look, it's it, it'll come together. It's going to take a bit of time, but for now, we'll just we'll park those two fixtures and hopefully we can go and get something at Arsenal next week. But thanks very much for tuning in. We really appreciate you uh, coming to to watch the podcast this week. If you have any ideas of of what you'd like included in the podcast, by all means, do get in touch with us through all our social channels. Um, we'll be back during the week with, with uh, our live podcast, which was 
uh, recorded live in Dublin um, a few weeks ago. So stay tuned for that. It's well worth a watch. There's there's three episodes of it. We hope you enjoy it as much as we did recording it. And all that's left to say is up the villa. Up the villa. <laughs>